I'm Dr. Rick Wilson from Rice University, and this is Polytrix. It's puzzling to see self-interested people sacrificing themselves to benefit their group, yet this seems commonplace. We tell stories about the soldier who sacrifices herself for her comrades, or the passing motorist who stops and jumps into a river to save drowning children. Altruism makes sense if the sacrifice is for relatives who share one's genes. However, why sacrifice for those who are unrelated? Charles Darwin speculated that sacrificing for one's group could enhance the group's survival. History seems to support the idea that a group working together can overcome another group and drive them to extinction. But it's not clear whether this is due to groups cooperating when in competition or whether it's due to the pressure of extinction through selection. A clever laboratory experiment by Catherine Eckel, Enrique Fata, Sarah Godet, and me asked whether competition or extinction drives increased cooperation within groups. Subjects arriving at a lab are randomly assigned to four-person groups. No one knows their fellow members, no one gets to talk to anyone, and all interactions are over a computer network. We use a standard public goods game in which subjects are given 50 monetary units in each of 10 periods. Each period, subjects decide how much they wish to keep in their private account and how much they want to put into the group account. The private account pays one to one, and whatever goes into the group account is doubled by the experimenters, and everyone in the group receives an equal share. So, if one subject put in all 50 units, they would be doubled, everybody in the group of four would get 25 units. If the other subjects kept all 50 units in their private account, they would get their 50 units plus their share of 25. As you can tell, everyone has an incentive to free ride off the contributions of others. But also notice that if everyone put all 50 units into the group account, everyone would get 100 units in return. Still, the temptation to free ride is strong. This basic experimental design has been used hundreds of times and free riding is common. We want to know whether the competition or extinction works to eliminate free riding in the way Darwin suggests. We have four treatments for our experiment. Subjects are told they will play two blocks of ten periods. The last block of ten periods is the same for everyone, no matter which treatment they begin with. The first block is what interests us. In the first treatment, we replicate the standard public goods game. In each period, subjects find out how much is contributed to their group account, and they see this information across all periods. In the second treatment, we introduce group competition. Subjects see the same information as in the first treatment. However, they, they're told at the end of the first 10 periods, their group will be ranked in terms of total earnings against the other groups in the experiment. In the third treatment, we introduce extinction. Subjects are told that at the end of 10 periods, their earnings will be compared with everyone else. One third of the lowest earners will be removed from the experiment and not allowed to participate in the second block of 10 periods. In the fourth treatment, we keep extinction and focus on groups. Subjects are told that at the end of 10 periods, their group's earnings will be compared with the other groups. One third of the groups earning the least will be removed from the experiment and will not participate in the second block of 10 periods. Well, the design is clever, then it allows us to separate the effects of competition from extinction. What do we find? When we replicate the standard public goods game, we find that the average contributions steadily decline over the 10 periods. People start out by contributing about half their endowment and then decrease their contributions to the public good. When we look at the individual extinction treatment, we see a similar pattern. Over time, people contribute less to the public good and favor their private investments. When turning to group competition, we again see the same behavior. The groups unravel over time. So far, it looks like neither extinction nor competition matters. But when we introduce group extinction, we see a remarkably different result. At the outset, individuals contribute almost everything to the group account. The pressure of group extinction results in individuals cooperating within the group. The finding is stunning for what it says about group extinction. People respond to threats to their group. They're willing to forego opportunities to free ride on the efforts of their group members. Well, this article gives us insight into the origins of group conflict, and I think it's well worth the read.